In this video, we'll take a look at the procedure for an issue with the wing anti-ice valve. Let's depart from New York's LaGuardia Airport. During the flight, we turn on the engine and wing anti-ice switches. When the switches are turned on, they initially are brighter, this indicates that the valve is moving or is no longer in the commanded switch position. However, once the valve is in the commanded position, the lights go dim. In this case, the right wing anti-ice light remained bright, the valve didn't open after the switch was moved. As with all non-normal situations, the first step is to clarify the pilot flying is maintaining aircraft control. No transfer of controls was necessary, this statement is to verbalize in a non-normal situation that someone is in control, while the other pilot works the issue, avoiding distraction from the primary task, aircraft control. The non-normal checklist can now also be called for. My aircraft. Wing anti-ice valve open checklist. If the pilot flying did not state, my aircraft, the pilot monitoring would ask. Have you got the aircraft? When the wing anti-ice switch is turned on, AC-powered valves open allowing hot engine bleed air to be routed to three inboard leading edge slats on each wing. The hot air is sprayed onto the slats warming them up, then exhausted overboard through holes in the bottom of the slats. We are in the descent and can see possible icing conditions ahead. The pilot monitoring gets to work with the checklist. If applicable, the QRC is checked for the procedure, then the quick reference handbook. Wing anti-ice valve open is found in the QRH, in the alphabetical index, under W. It directs us to go to page 3.4. The pilot monitoring then states the procedure title and condition, and seeks agreement from the pilot flying that this is the correct checklist before continuing. Wing anti-ice valve open checklist. Condition a wing anti-ice left valve open or right valve open light, stays illuminated bright blue if the wing anti-ice valve is not in the commanded position. Do you agree? I agree. Choose one, the wing anti-ice switch is on. It is on, choosing this path. The wing anti-ice valve is failed closed. Wing anti-ice switch to off. It's off. Note, avoid icing conditions where wing anti-ice is needed. The four black boxes indicate that in this scenario, where the wing anti-ice switch was on, then turned off, that the checklist has been completed, and the pilot monitoring would state to the pilot flying. Wing anti-ice valve open checklist, complete. To avoid icing conditions, consideration can be given to weather conditions on the descent and landing. Air traffic control can also be asked if icing has been reported. Let's take a look at what the checklist would have had us do if the wing anti-ice switch had been off and the light remained brightly illuminated. If the wing anti-ice switch is off, it states that the wing anti-ice valve is failed open and directs us to go to step 2. Before performing step 2, if applicable, have a look at the use of bold text and capital letters to clearly indicate conditions within the step and to ensure the correct switches are moved. If total air temperature is above 10 degrees Celsius, or there is no visible moisture. Let's find out. The T80 shows minus 10 degrees Celsius, so we're not above positive 10 degrees. Already a condition of step two has been met. T80 is not above 10 degrees Celsius. Isolation valve switch, close. Pack switch, on the affected side, so right side, off.
Note, this causes the operating pack to regulate to high flow, in flight, with the flaps up. Engine bleed air switch, affected side, so right side, to off. Note, wing anti-ice is not available on the affected side with the isolation valve switch closed. Wing anti-ice valve open checklist complete. We hope you learned from our look at the wing anti-ice valve open, non-normal procedure. If you enjoyed please like, and please subscribe to learn of our future videos, when we'll learn more about the 737. Thank you.